First, I'd like to give a special thanks to Paramount Motors for making this video possible. They supplied the car in today's video, and I'm a past customer. They are a very nice dealership, and I've had really good experiences, so I highly recommend them if you're in the market for an electric vehicle. They are located just south of downtown Seattle, near the old uh, Rainier Brewery. Hi, this is John with The Evolving World. Today, I'm doing a video on a 2014 Toyota RAV4 EV. Interesting vehicle because it's a Toyota and it's also a Tesla at the same time. It has a Tesla powertrain, Tesla battery pack. Um, one first thing you notice about the vehicle as I do a walk around is uh, you notice that it's pretty conventional looking. They didn't mess it up or anything. They didn't make it look too funky. I mean, other than the, the badging, the different grille, that's the only two things that are really different about, about it from a, from a regular RAV4. So they didn't mess up the styling. They kind of left it alone. Very, you know, clean, conservative design. Nothing... Uh, particularly crazy about it. Nothing uh, funky, nothing uh, bizarre. Looks like a typical SUV. One of the most interesting things about this vehicle is that it's a partnership between Toyota and Tesla. Probably never to be repeated again, but this was an event that only happened between 2012 and 2014. And so this particular model is the only thing that was actually produced with this partnership. There were about 200 of these cars made in 2012, 1113, and then 1200 in, in 2014. And so this is one of the last examples that was made of that collaboration. With only 2,500 examples ever made, this is kind of a unique vehicle, kind of limited production. But it's not the very first uh, RAV4 EV. The very first one was actually based off the first generation car with back in 97 to 2003 where only 1,500 examples were made of that vehicle. Very hard, very rare vehicle nowadays. You very unlikely find one. Or is this vehicle still available? Um, this is based off a third generation RAV4. So it's a much larger, much roomier vehicle. And it's also a lot faster too. I mean, this vehicle, when you put it in sport mode, it's 27% more power than when you're in normal mode. And it puts out about 273 pounds of torque. So you're looking at about a 0 to 60 time of about 7.5 seconds or so. The vehicle weighs about 4,000 pounds. So it's not light, but, uh, you know, for a vehicle of this size, there's nothing else this big. You can haul as much stuff in any kind of uh, EV. As we continue to look at the under the hood here, we can kind of see some of the, the reservoirs there. There's like two of them, one for the battery pack, one for the motor. And then there's also a pink reservoir, which I think is for the heat pump because it was running as I was as I was uh, idling the car there. So I had the heat on, so it was kept on turning on the fan and everything. So I think that's for the heat pump. It was kind of bubbling up and everything. And as you can kind of see, if you back the video a little bit, you can kind of see that it's kind of like in motion. So the nice thing about having a heat pump is that it's a far more efficient than a resistor heater. It's, it's going to be a lot more efficient at producing heat for your per your kilowatt, which is very important in, a, in an electric vehicle, especially if you, if you live in a cold climate. So another question you might be asking is, uh, well, is it all-wheel drive? And unfortunately, on the electric version, it's only front wheel drive. So you only have traction on the front wheel. So it kind of limits its off-road ability a bit. But you could, it's definitely still a CUV. It's still a very rugged vehicle. You could probably take it on some gravel trail kind of roads. But yeah, you would have to definitely note that uh, it's not, it's not four-wheel drive. The fifth door on the RAV4 is a little bit different than some other SUVs. It doesn't have a hatch. It actually has a door that opens, that's hinged on the right, opens on the left. So it's kind of convenient if you uh, have a very low roof height, if there's like a branches or something, or if there's something overhead that allows you not to open an overhead door. However, if somebody parks close behind you, like say two feet away, if you open that real door, it you, you know you won't be able to open it. I mean, it will smash right into the car behind you. So it's kind of a it's kind of double edged sword. Kind of convenient in some ways, not so convenient in others. And although it was optional on the standard gas. Uh, RAV4. The electric version does not have a third row seat, but it's kind of funny that as I was looking around at the trunk area there, you can kind of see there's all these fittings and stuff. There's even a seat belt there for the for the rear seat, and it's kind of funny because it's not even available on this model. Those are very small, suitable for like small children only kind of seats anyway, and they actually were kind of clever in that they would fold into the floor. You have to just kind of consider like a, it's a vehicle basically with those seats folded down already, so you don't lose any cargo capacity. I'm not exactly sure what is located down below that seat there. I try to take a look of it underneath there. I can't really tell. There is a nice multi-link suspension down there, which is a nice thing to have. I know some of the earlier RAV4s had a beam axle, 
a cheap, you know, economy car beam axle. So this car at least has a multi-link. That's always a good thing. The battery pack itself is actually located between the front and the rear tires right underneath the underbody of the vehicle. So it's, it only takes about a couple inches away from the ground clearance. But as you can see, there's still plenty of ground clearance underneath there. The seats are all very comfortable. They're all fully manual. So there's no luxury items there, but it does have the proximity key access, which really does ease access to the car. You just leave the fob in your pocket and kind of just push the door, little button on each doorknob to, to open it or twice to open all doors at the same time. The rear seat's actually very roomy, very flexible, very useful. You can kind of adjust the seats uh, fore and aft and, you know, it's 60-40, so you can kind of adjust each one individually. It's very nice, very roomy. Interior, uh, I could see it would be very useful for, for people with families and such. Yeah, how you adjust the seat is there's, there's levers on each individual section there. You can simply reach down there and then move it up forward. So if you have some big items in the back, you can kind of fit bigger items back there and adjust each seat individually. It's actually very nice, very, very useful format, very multi-purpose friendly. Oh, I think this is adjustable headlights, like the leaf. <laughs> That's kind of a wimpy horn. Cruise control. Awkward. Actually, this is the exact same mirror that's on a Nissan Leaf. We got Home Link right here. One, two, three controls for that.
mirror control, power folding mirrors. weird. That is bizarre. I'm going to try to get to the radio on this thing. Playing around with it. I know it turns back on automatically. So driving the car here is kind of uh, 
I guess it's kind of as you would expect. I mean, it is a CUV, so it doesn't drive too much like a car, but then it doesn't really drive like a truck either. Ride's kind of so-so. I mean, it's not bad. So this being a Tesla motor and Tesla battery pack, you would think that it would drive a little bit like a Tesla. And I'm not really finding that to be the case. It does have this brake, brake mode that you can activate with the joystick down here makes it drive a little bit more like a Tesla but not really kind of drives I would say an i3 drive, probably drives more like a Tesla than, than this car but this is a very roomy car it's very you know you sit up high and everything it's you know it's an SUV CUV now the system seems to be pretty easy to use easy to zoom in and zoom out. Some of these are not that way. The thing about this car, it has a 42 kilowatt pack supplied by Tesla. So you know that that's going to be pretty much bulletproof. Um, the range of the car is about 92 miles EPA however if you put it into extended mode we fully charge the pack it is able to go 113 so what EPA decided to do is they just labeled it 103 officially so if you charge it to 80% it's 92 and if you charge it all the way to 100% then it's like 113 But yeah, generally the driving dynamics, I mean, I think it's a multi-link suspension all the way around, so, you know, you have good separation and stuff, you get bumps and everything, and the ride is kind of, I would say, you know, average, maybe slightly bumpy, just, just the nature of the vehicle being a higher riding vehicle and everything, and being somewhat off-road capable, I don't, I don't think it's, you know, it's not really that hardcore kind of off-road vehicle, but it, it can, you know, it can definitely... I mean, you can take it on some gravel roads or something like that, you know. You need an extra clearance. This car definitely has that, so. Nice higher riding vehicle. But yeah, I think the thing, interesting thing about this vehicle, I think is what makes it kind of unique is this partnership with Tesla and Toyota. It was a very unique time in history. I don't think they're gonna get together again ever anytime soon. But at least back in 2013, 2012, 2013, 2014, this is a 2014 model. And they all, it's my understanding they only made about 2,500 of these vehicles. So they're kind of, they're kind of special in a way. You know, because just like the uh, original Roadster Coupe, they only made about, I think, about the same amount of cars in that one too, I believe. I think it was like 3,000. But that was over like th several years. This car is basically only one year they made this car, I think. But they're not actually 13, 13 and 14, I guess it was. But yeah, they, uh, but yeah, if they only made 25 of these cars, 2,500 of these cars, it's kind of a unique thing, you know? It's kind of interesting. Kind of have that Toyota reliability and they got the Tesla powertrain battery pack which are turning out to be very reliable very durable and everything although this particular car I think had a few issues with the power with the bat with the uh, motor they all tend to fail or something after a period of time and then Tesla redoes it or something and then they're good from that point onwards but um, other than that I think they're, they're pretty much solid the battery packs are solid but yeah that's the only thing that you know that with this particular car can expect that I guess.
but otherwise, yeah, they've been proven out to be pretty reliable since I got 34,000 miles on it. Drives pretty good. I think it's had its motor replaced, so that's probably a one-time thing. From that point onward, I would think it would last a very long time. It's also very, very quiet too. Like unlike a, not all the electric cars I drive are quiet. Like this one's very quiet. Like the motor itself is very quiet. It's like super quiet. But that's what Teslas do. I mean, my Tesla Model S is super quiet too. Unlike my Fiat, which has got a little bit more motor noise to it. You can actually hear it. You can kind of hear, hear it whirl a little bit, which is not really offensive or anything. It's it's just uh, yeah. This is just super. You don't even know. Like if I mash the, the throttle, it doesn't really make any difference. This would probably be a pretty nice opportunity for somebody who collects certain kind of cars because you know it is kind of rare in the sense that if they only made 2,500 of these things it's kind of like and if you need a CUV it's probably kind of an interesting ticket or a pretty interesting play to make if you want to buy a car and keep it for 20 years. Oh, and another thing that's interesting about this car, not this particular one, but they um, there is an aftermarket company that makes a quick charger for it, because this car has level two only. Um, and this aftermarket company, for $3,000, they'll put on a, a Chidemo fast charger unit, and that allows you to charge up the car anywhere where you can uh, do a Chidemo, anywhere there's a Chidemo charger. And that would open up the world a bit on this car because if you've got a 100 mile range, it is very limiting when it takes four hours to charge up the car. Actually, this is probably five or six hours to charge this car up. But if you uh, if you got that fast charge, it would be like 45 minutes or something. And that would be a nice play to, to make. I think if, if you were in the market to buy this car, I would highly recommend doing that, especially if you're going to drive for long distances because they would make it acceptable. And this car turns the radio on every time. Why? Must be a setting in here to change that somewhere. But anyway, we got it charging. I'm not sure if there's any. I don't know where the indicators are on this. I see no 
information here. It says what's happening on the on the charger, but there's nothing on here. There's no lights. No lights on the dash. No uh I mean there should be something. Yeah, I do not know how you know when this car is done charging. There's let me see if I just push on the pedal here. Okay, it should do something. Ready on available. Hmm. Okay, let's see something here. Display. After the beep, say a shortcut menu command. Say help at any time for additional instructions. I mean, every car I've driven that's electric has some sort of way of showing you what the charge status is. I mean, they're all a little bit different. But this one is just, I don't see anything in here. This is weird. Huh. I think when you turn the car off, it does something. Let me see here. Turn this off. Here we go. Trip summary. Wait, it goes 3.3. .3. Oh, here we go. Something. Charge immediately on plug in. And so yeah, here's the extended charge. So this is if you want to go, if you want to fully charge up the battery. This will get you like EPA 113 miles. And if you don't turn this on, it's like 92. Which I don't know. We could turn it on for the fun of it. Six hours, a minute. Oh, easy to turn it off. Five hours, 18 minutes. I don't think it makes that much difference. Oh, anyway. Okay, so that's my review of a 2014 Toyota RAV4 with a Tesla powertrain. Hope you enjoyed this video. More videos to come. Thanks for watching.